This training video is brought to you by Avalon Training Group. In this video, I will cover the details on how to configure the OLAP database in Project Server Environment 2010 or 2013. The only difference between the two environments is where you access the page to define your settings. In 2010, we can go right to the Server Settings page to define the build settings, add custom fields, and calculated measures. In 2013, you'll need to access this page from the SharePoint Central Administration site. So let's get started and learn how to configure the OLAP database. My server settings page, and I'm going to click the link under Database Administration for OLAP Database Administration. I'm going to select the OLAP cube, and um, if I were to build a new cube, then I would have to go in and define what server I'm building it on, and I'll just bring up the settings just to give you a quick overview. I know you said most of your cubes are already built. But I identify the name of the server where SQL Analysis Services is running, and I identify the name of the cube that I want to build, and this is where I would partition. If I wanted to filter out for, for just one department, I would select what that department is. So. I wanted to choose IT, I'd have to have a drop list set up here, and I would select the appropriate department. Uh, then I would go down on the lower half of this form, I would identify the date range. Uh, this is the default earliest start and latest finish, but sometimes if I'm just running reports, let's say all my reports that are based off the OLAP are for availability. And so those reports are really time sensitive. I really don't need to get all my data. If I, all my reports are availability, then I could say, you know what, I only need one month back and maybe six months forward uh, included in this cube. So I could, I could trim off and make the data set much smaller so that when I bring up my reports, they, they run faster. Another example would be, let's suppose I'm trying to get everything for that fiscal year. I could do a fixed date range, a start and a, a from and a to. So if I wanted everything from January 1st to December 31st, it would give me, the other one is more like a moving window, this middle radio button. And this last radio button is setting a fixed start and finish. And it, it gives me that slice in time. So I'll use this if I just want to have a capture of the calendar year or a fiscal year. But if I want to make sure I include everything, all costs, then I need to pick the earliest start and the latest finish. I can schedule this to take place, this update take place nightly, weekly, and depending upon what your update cycle is for your team members, um, it may not be necessary for you to update this on a daily basis. You might just do weekly. If you're doing timesheets, for example, and most of your reports are based off actual hours submitted, reviewed by the project manager, and accepted into the plan. That's going to take. That's going to follow a weekly cycle. So the timesheets are probably going to get submitted on Friday. Sometime on Monday, the project managers would review that data and commit it to the plans. So you might want to run your cube starting Monday night. Or you may want to give the project managers two days to do that and run it Tuesday nights. So it doesn't have to be a daily build. The, the OLAP reports should be considered point-in-time reports. So if you're looking at cost data, actual hours, and you're relying on timesheet data, you really don't need to have it update day by day. So um, I didn't make any changes here, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel from this screen. And now I'm going to bring up my configuration. So the configuration is where you can choose the custom fields that are going to be added to the, your cube. So you'll notice when I click the down arrow on the cube dimensions, I've got project, resource, task, and assignment. So even though we cannot build custom assignment, custom fields, they are propagated down from task and resource. At the project level I can choose which custom fields I want to add and these are showing me the all the custom fields that are available that are drop list. 
So if it's a custom field that's a free form text, it cannot be included in the cube. So if I go to my task level custom fields, these are my task level custom fields. And if I wanted to add flag status as another custom field, I could certainly select that and add that. My resource custom fields, if I wanted to add the resource department. And then down at the assignment level, this is where I have the most to choose from because all of those task and project level custom fields get pushed down. So if I wanted to do some analysis and think of assignment data as that work, the work hours. So if I wanted to roll my work hours up by team, then I would add the team name for the resource as well as the assignment. So it's, it's at the resource level and at the assignment level. Down here under cube measures, this is where I can choose the numerical data that I want to add. So under the project cube, any numerical custom field that I've created is going to be listed in the left hand side under available and I can add those as selected measures and I've already added two. I've added a, a custom field called sample proposal cost which comes with Microsoft Project Server. It's already set up for me and a custom field that I set up called cost estimate. And then I don't have any numeric custom fields at the resource task or assignment level so all of those are blank. So it's just some numerical fields at the project level. Then I've got the built-in numerical data like cost data, work data, and baseline data. And out of the box, you'll notice that all of these are selected. But if I'm not running reports off of all the different baseline data, then it is not necessary for me to include baseline 1 through baseline 10. If I'm running my reports always off current baseline, then I just need to choose the main baseline. And if I want to in include earned value data, I can also include earned value. So by, by removing all that extra baseline data, it makes for a smaller cube, more efficient report, easier to build reports because you don't have all that extra, uh, those extra fields that you're scrolling up and down. I recommend that you leave the setting include inactive tasks, leave that turned off as it is out of the box because in Project 2010, which was the first version that introduced inactive tasks, when we inactivate a task in Project, it will remove that cost data and work data from the total for the project. So I, and I want to keep that out of my report. So if, if I inactivate a task and that task costs $10,000, I don't want to have that $10,000 added back in. And this is where we can build calculated measures. And a really common one would be doing a calculation for availability or remaining availability, I should say. So availability is capacity minus work. So you might want to grab a screenshot of this because there's three examples here and I'm going to create a fourth one just so you can see how it's done. So there's three examples here of formulas that I'm calculating and I'm calculating based on the field capacity which is in this cube called the virtual portfolio analyzer. So capacity, when I build my OLAP cube, there are about a dozen cubes that are built. The cubes that are built are listed here. So we've got 3, 6, 9, 10, 11. So 11 primary cubes and then 3 virtual cubes. So 14 in total. The primary cubes have less data. So for example, the issue cube has issue data, the risk cube has risk data, and the deliverables cube has deliverable data. But there's a combined virtual cube called project and project SharePoint that combines the data from all three of those cubes. And the project and timesheet cube, virtual cube, combines data from the timesheet and the EPM timesheet cube. 
So the virtual cubes have more data. And the one that you'll use a lot when analyzing capacity and assignment work is the portfolio analyzer. Because the portfolio analyzer includes the time phased resource, which is going to give you your capacity, and the time phased assignment, which is going to, going to give you there the utilization on that capacity. Right down here, you see where it says the expression for, for available hours. This is remaining availability. The, and I, I've labeled it avail, available hours. You could just label it availability. So uh, I'm taking, and in square brackets, I'm using the field capacity. And I'm subtracting, in square brackets, the field work. And then if I want to get their utilization, calculate, in square brackets, work divided by capacity. And, and I'm going to build a third example. So I'm going to, well, it's a fourth example, but, but there's only two related to our discussion on capacity. So I'm going to click my insert to insert another blank row. And then I'm going to put in available days. Because what I find with my reports is that capacity minus work is always in hours. And if I'm wanting to report based on you know their available days, then I could take and, and put in parentheses, so I'll start with my capacity in square brackets, minus square bracket work. So put that all in parentheses and then divide that by my eight hour day or 7.5 hour day, whatever your standard work day is. So that's going to give me their available days. So if I'm doing a report that's, you know, looking at their, their monthly utilization and availability for the month. Uh, sometimes I'd rather see that in days. That's how you build your custom formulas. And I have another more complex example here. Uh, sometimes I like to look at my cost breakdown. And you'll notice that all my examples in the OLAP with my, my custom measures are around work and cost data. Because that's really what the OLAP reports are all about. Let's suppose I wanted to look at uh, baseline cost as a percentage of cost so that I would know you know what percentage were over budget or under budget so I'm looking at cost as a percentage of baseline so now that we've learned how to build some custom formulas let's save the changes that we've made to this cube remember this was the configuration settings where we selected the custom fields that were going to be added to the cube and now the custom formulas that we also want included. Once we return to the OLAP database administration screen, we can go ahead and select our cube and then click Build Now. And once we click Build Now, it's going to begin processing to rebuild the cube. Any custom fields that we've included, any new calculated measures that we've included will now be built into the database. That completes our video on how to customize the configuration of your OLAP cube.